To go or not to go? That's really the question. Welcome to the Safer Pilot Challenge. What's happening, M-Zero Nation? Jason Shepard here. Today in day six of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, we're talking about making smart go and no-go decisions. By the way, who is six for six? Let me know in the comments below. If not, you've got five videos to go catch up on. Go find those videos as well, and then we'll dive into it here together. One more reminder, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. And again, if you love these free videos, imagine how good the paid videos are inside our online ground school membership. Go over to m0atrial.com to check that out and learn more. You see, I want to focus, I'm doing this early on in this 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge series because I can give you the flying skills to make you the next Jaeger or Earhart or Rickenbacker, whatever pilot you really look up to. However, if you have all those skills and you don't have the decision-making process behind it, you're going to end up hurting yourself. So what's going to really happen here? So today we're going to talk about the many aspects of decision-making, starting with what the FAA gives us. You all know it as the PAVE checklist, the PAVE acronym. The P, what does it stand for? Well, it's for you, the pilot. How about a pre-flight on yourself using the I'm safe checklist? How are you the pilot? Then we get to the A for aircraft. Not only how is the aircraft, aero, A tomato flame, CFR 91205, all that stuff. How are you, the pilot, in that aircraft? Then we steal the V from the word environment uh, to get to the V in PAVE here. How are you, the pilot, in that environment? Is the aircraft equipped for this environment here? And how is the environment? Is it down to minimums? Is the weather crummy? Maybe we shouldn't go flying. And lastly, the ease for external pressures. This is a tough one. It's that buddy who's been bugging you to fly forever. It's that commercial pilot job that says you need to say go when others say no. The external pressures add to that. And it's bigger than that too. It's pressure from friends. It's pressure from work, whatever that may be. You feel the need to impress. You feel the need to, oh my goodness, my examiner has canceled on me three times or I've weather has canceled my check ride three times. I just need to get it done. Anybody ever been there before maybe? I know it's hard to schedule examiners right now and some of y'all are rushing check rides on days you shouldn't be flying. Remember on a check ride, that's your first passenger you're flying with private pilots. It is your job to make smart decisions. Speaking of that, how about a quick refresher of our five hazardous attitudes, by the way. I'm sure none of you are victims of any of these, but just a quick recap. You know we have the five hazardous attitudes of macho, invulnerability, resignation, anti-authority, and impulsivity. See, the FAA gives us these because they know, hey, we are only human. And it's not just us that deals with this. It's, right, pilots, mechanics, controllers, all the above, we deal with this. You need to know what your hazardous attitude weaknesses are and keep in mind what that plays into the decision-making process. What is each of these, by the way? Macho, that, oh, I can do anything, or hey, watch this is a better way to say it. Invulnerability is more the, I can do anything. Accidents only happen to people on TV. That will never, ever happen to me. Well, we need to start talking about some antidotes because an antidote to invulnerability is, well, it probably could happen to you. So think about that. And then there's resignation, which is always a fascinating one. Resignation, I like to use the archetype for like a, a George Costanza, right? Remember from Seinfeld? Oh, what's the use? Why bother? People, and I've seen students do it, literally resign from that situation. What's the antidote? Well, you can make a difference. How about anti-authority? Don't tell me what to do. Follow the rules, they're usually right. There's that old saying that uh, the fars are written in blood. It's a little gruesome, but unfortunately it's true. Then there's impulsivity. I don't care what you do, just do something quickly. It needs to get done. The antidote, hey, slow down, not so fast. Let's think this through. The impulsive person just feels good doing something when in reality you just need to slow down. Let's think this thing 
through. This is where our training really works and really works to kick in uh, when dealing with these five hazardous attitude. By the way, back to macho, that watch this, I can do it, whatever. Hey, taking chances, showing off, it's foolish. Now, I know we all just watched Top Gun 2 and there's a little macho hazardous attitude in each of us after watching a movie like that. Taking chances is foolish, right? So just remember that. And understanding, we all have just a little bit of these five hazardous attitudes. If you would be so humble, Maybe share in the comments, which one are you susceptible to? Because you need to be on the lookout for it as well. Being honest with you, if I had to pick a hazardous attitude for me, it's a, a combination of a little bit of macho and a little bit of invulnerability. And let me tell you, if you let those two get together, you will get hurt. Oh, I've got all these hours. I've been flying for two decades. Oh, I've got all this. No, you'll end up hurting yourself. In fact, I want you to be my accountability partner. You ever see me out there pre-flight without a checklist or doing something a little uh, differently or contrary to what we teach? I want you as my friend, because that's what a friend would do, is call me out on it. And in fact, you have these resources. When's the last time you called a weather briefer and heard those magic words, VFR flight, not recommended? You know, maybe if JFK Jr. called to get a weather briefing and heard, because he would have heard those words, VFR flight not recommended, maybe he'd be around today. You see, at the end of the day, you are PIC, pilot in command. You have to make good decisions. And if you're an instructor watching this video, you need to lead through making those good decisions. Now, I as an instructor will sit back and, and watch your decision-making process. And even I as an instructor, it's gusting to 15 today, and you have 10 hours. And you say to me, oh, I think it's a good day to fly. As your instructor, I'm gonna go, huh, that's interesting. You have 10 hours, it's gusting to 15. You think it's a good day to fly. I'll tell you what, let's just go up real quick. Again, I'm the instructor, I'll be the lifeguard and protect us in that situation. But sometimes a little bit of humility, they get up there and go, whoa, gusting to 15, I could barely control the airplane. Sometimes it's good to have those experiences to learn to then go do what's so important, which is create your personal minimums. I know I say this every year we do the Safer Pilot Challenge. If you do not have hard set personal minimums, you're doing yourself a disservice. I teach them this way, and there's three combinations to this. I will not go flying if the winds are greater than blank. You fill in that blank. I will not go flying if the visibility is less than blank. Fill in that blank and add some margin here because Visibility of nine is not that great. <laughs> Just so you know, VFR pilots, all right? I will not go flying if the clouds are less than blank. Notice the verbiage there. I didn't say ceiling, lowest broken overcast layer. I said clouds. Because you've seen a few layer, become a scattered layer, become a broken layer, become a stuck on top of an overcast layer, haven't you before? And if not, you'll see it happen one day. It doesn't matter where you are geographically. I teach these hard set personal minimums because I let the METAR make the decision for me. If I say I will not go flying if the winds are greater than 15, and I read the METAR and the winds are 230 at 10 gust 16, I look at my hard set personal minimums and say that, that exceeds it. It's a no go for me. I let the numbers do the talking. Now obviously, I can uh, work with these, I can decrease these, these numbers as I add things like an instrument rating and more hours, but I can also increase them. When I'm flying with Magda, my wife, I'll increase them. When I'm flying in a new airplane, I'll increase them. When I'm flying in a new uh, unfamiliar airspace, I will increase them, right? And then you have to also think about there's the situation where you go, you make a go decision, and it becomes a no-go about halfway through. We'll be talking a lot about diversions throughout these uh, next, uh, next few days together here, but you need to always have a plan B, a realistic plan B and plan C, and always have the mindset that you may need to execute on that. In fact, instrument pilots watching this, I, I know there's circumstances where an alternate is required. I am here to tell you an alternate in, in this world is always required. I know you want to follow, oh, it's the one, two, three, and they, we have these cute mnemonics to remember it. Let me tell you something. Instrument flying on a clear blue day, it's always, an alternate's always required in my book. Two last things I want to end with here, uh, and then we'll get back and start diving into tomorrow again. I can't wait to read your comments below. Those are really the oxygen that just keep this going and, and motivate 
uh, myself and the team. So thank you for your words of encouragement because I don't know if you know how much effort it takes for the whole team to put 31 videos in a row together like this. Two more topics, then we'll wrap up here. Two big killers of pilots, VFR and IMC. The statistics show that this accident 80% of the time is fatal. Pilots, we're misjudging weather or we don't understand weather products and briefs. You must continue to learn, right? I've heard a saying, a good pilot is always learning. How about you focus this year on your knowledge of weather and weather services? Do you really know what your tablet is telling you weather-wise? Do you know how to recognize deteriorating weather conditions for your area? Let me tell you something. You come to fly in Florida in August, you better have an 8 a.m. Uh, departure time because by two o'clock, it's nasty and rainy here. You need to know that, all right? The second part, so the first was VFR and IMC. A second just killer in the decision-making department for pilots is a failure to go around. I said this in Aviation Master of the Book. Humble yourself in aviation or aviation will humble you. You need to be humble enough to know when I need to go around and always be mentally prepared to go around. Instrument pilots, have you briefed the missed approach, whether it's the published one or whether it's the one ATC gives you? Always prepared to go around. Sometimes people think, I can save the landing. Usually you can't. If you ever, can we make a promise? And just put in the comments below, I promise, Jason. If, you, if the thought ever goes through your head on final, on base or downwind for that matter, oh, I can save it. I can fix this landing. That, that's clue number one. It's time to go around. So you got to think about, and again, there's so many things that could happen. There's unexpected hazards. A deer runs down the runway. No joke, one time Magda and I were flying into the Kissimmee uh, airport, actually to go to, uh, go to the attractions there in Orlando, and there was an alligator on the runway. Can't make this up. Only in Florida does that happen. But it, it could be animals. It could be other aircraft. It could be wind shear. It could be, you know what? We say a perfect land starts with a perfect pattern. Your pattern may be way too high or way too low or just way too sloppy, right? Never hesitate to go around. So listen, we're only six days into this thing right now. And there's so much more to go. Check in below, six for six, like, subscribe. And again, you think these videos are good, come hang out with myself and the online ground school members. Go to m0atrial.com, take a free trial of it. See why the best just keeps on getting better. See why our members, our students, our learners are scoring six points higher on their knowledge tests than the national average. I can tell you the difference. It's not just this academia, right? We teach the real world. We teach when things hit the fan, this is what you do. And if that's you, right? If you're a real world pilot, I encourage you to check it out. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you. The Private Pilot Blueprint is everything I wish someone would have told me before I started my flight training. It's the definitive roadmap to beginning that aviation journey. You can grab your copy by going to privatepilotblueprint.com.